Praise the Lord, church. Well, welcome to the Lighthouse Pentecostal Church. It is wonderful that we're able to get together online. Uh, I'm Pastor Nate, if you haven't met me. Uh, it's wonderful that we're able to uh, come together online. Unfortunately, we're unable to come together in person in a congregation, but we can still uh, hear from God and uh, we can still uh, hear the word of God. We can still be ministered to. So I encourage you, find a screen, the biggest screen you may have, whether it's an iPad or a tablet of some sort or a big TV monitor or something. Uh, get the family together and let's, uh, let's dig into the word this morning. But before we do that, let's open this morning in prayer and let's pray uh, for the word this morning. God, we worship you. We praise you and we magnify you. There is no one like you, Jesus. There's no one that compares or comes close to you, God. And God, I pray this morning that you would sweep into every living room, God, that is, uh, that is around the world, that is hearing this word this morning, that you would sweep into every place this morning, God, to everybody that is tuning in. And that, God, I pray that your presence would rest there, that your peace that passes all understanding would be with them. And I pray, God, that you would uh, saturate them with your presence with your presence saturate them with your peace god in i pray for the word this morning that you would minister to us that you would speak to us god we worship you and we praise you in jesus name amen 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 let's turn to the book of samuel first samuel chapter 30 verse 1 and as you're turning there as you're turning there i want to uh encourage you if there are any technical glitches or technical issues, please send us a message. Let us know so that we can get those ironed out and taken care of. But let's turn to the word. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. Verse 2. And had taken the women captive that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and the men came, so David and the men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and and their and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Verse four. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinon the the Jezreelite, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the, the Carmelite. And David was greatly, and, uh, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of, the, of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abatha the priest, the priest, uh, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abatha brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after, after the troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, he answered, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and with and without fail recover all. Thou shalt o surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. I want to preach just for the next little while to you on this subject. Victory through defeat. Victory through defeat, not victory outside of defeat, not, not victory with, uh, without or going around defeat, not victory uh, over defeat, but victory through defeat. We must understand that God will always be with us through 
everything, no matter what may be going on, no matter what situation we may face as an individual or what situation we may face as a church, we must understand that God will always be with us through it. But the big question is, the big challenge is this morning, is will you be with God? That is the question uh, through this that I want to challenge you with is, will you be with God through the defeat to see the victory take place. I am not saying and I'm not questioning that you would uh, on purpose leave God. Nobody really intentionally on purpose uh, leaves God, but people can slip away. People can struggle and and find difficult things uh, when they're faced with pressure, when they're faced with strenuous situations, that they find themselves slipping away, that they find themselves struggling to hold on to their relationship with God. And so my question to you is not will God be with you through the trial, not will God be with you through the defeat, but will you be with God through the trial? Will you be with God through the defeat? David's history is one of victory and one of uh, exciting times and exciting things happening and, 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 and all this kind of stuff. David is, is a shepherd and is anointed to be the king of Israel, the next king of Israel. While Saul remains king, he's anointed to be the next king of Israel by Samuel. His, his story goes on and and he works with Saul and he, he goes into the palace and he plays the harp for Saul and he, and he works with Saul and he becomes quite the warrior after killing uh, Goliath through the power of God. Uh, he, he kills Goliath and the crowds chant, David's killed his ten thousands and, and Saul his thousands and, and, and he becomes quite the warrior for Israel. But soon after, not, not too far after, Saul begins to chase David for his life. And slowly, one after another, David loses contact with his support group. He loses connection with those that are around him. Where We, we don't see much of uh, his relationship with his father, Jesse, and his, and his brothers and, and the Israelites that were cheering him on, that were saying, David, you've... You've, uh, you've slain your ten thousands and, and he's stripped away from his best friend and closest ally, Jonathan, when Saul tries to uh, ch- starts chasing him to kill him because Jonathan is Saul's son. And so slowly things are being stripped away from David, one after another, losing connection with those things that supported him, with those things that were uh, around him to, that he could turn to, that he could go to. And then all of a sudden, David and his men, his men is what is left with. His men support him in the cave as Saul is chasing him. His men are there to support him. His men are there to be with him. But David is faced in this, in this passage that we read, David is faced with a new challenge. Something he has never been faced with before. Something he has never dealt with before. He is faced with defeat. He rocks up to Ziklag after a three-day journey, a meeting with the princes of, Philistine, uh, of the Philistines, and he comes back to Ziklag, his home, where he and his men have, have created a home. And he turns up, he and his men, and he turns up, and everything is burnt, and everything that he knows is gone. And lost. Everything has been taken from him and he faces defeat. He faces defeat. At this stage, David nor his men do not know whether their wives or their children are alive. They're not concerned about the possessions, the material stuff, but they don't even know whether their wives or their children are alive at this stage. All they see at this point is everything that they know has been taken and burnt. And finally, and finally, David has, begun, has lost another support in Ziklag. 
being burnt to the ground and his wives being taken and his family being taken. What do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when you're facing something you've never faced before? Where do you go to? And who do you go to? Are the questions you need to answer as we face what is facing the world today? What do you do? Where do you go? And who do you go to? It says that David's men wept until there was nothing more left in them to weep. His men wept until there was nothing left in them to weep. There was no tears left to cry. Their soul was grieved, it says. They were grieved to the soul. These weren't just your average guys. These were manly men, if I can put it that way. They were the man's men. They were the guys who, if, if, if you looked up man in the dictionary, you would see someone like Eleazar who, who battled in, in, first Sam, in 2 Samuel chapter 23. He, he, he battles. He battles so hard in a war that his fist gets clenched to the sword and they have to pry his hand off the sword. These are men that knew how to, if you read in Judges chapter 20, they knew how to uh, shoot an arrow with both hands. They knew how to uh, fire a sling with, with both hands. They could wave, you know, David was good with the slingshot, but his, some of his men could fire a slingshot right-handed or left-handed. It doesn't, didn't matter. These were the kind of men. They were used to battle. They were used to war. Uh, the, God had, Chronicles refers to these men as literally God bringing them together for David, you can, you can read more about the men of Ziklag in 1 Chronicles chapter 12. And so, and so for these men to weep because their soul was grieved, for these men to weep was, was, was mean, letting us know that these men had no idea what they were going to do. What they, how they were going to overcome the hurdle they just saw in their homes and their houses and their workplaces and, their, and the things that they did, their livelihoods and their families being taken and destroyed. They had no idea how they were going to overcome that. And finally, the last support, the last, the last system or structure of support that David has in his men is stripped away as his men begin talking of stoning David because they're so grieved, they're so lost. And finally, with David, with every support system gone, with every support structure out of his life, he has to figure out what he is going to do. What will he do? Where will he go? And who will he go to? He had to figure it out. And brothers and sisters, while David had lost all his earthly support groups, he held on to one. He held on to one support that I said at the beginning of the message, that will never leave you, that will be with you through thick and thin, that will be with you with every, everywhere that you go, every step that you take. He will never leave you. He'll always be with you. And David turns to God. He turns to God to find out what to do. To find out what to do. You see, because David so elegantly penned, Yea, in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For there's a lot of money in my bank account. No, no. 
for, for, for my mortgage is taken care of and I have a steady job. No, no. For all my systems and the things that I'm used to are there. No, no. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Brothers and sisters, during this time, you need to figure out what your relationship with God is really like. Will you stick with God? God will never leave you, but will you stick with God when the conferences are gone? Will you stick with God when the camp meetings are cancelled? When the youth camps are cancelled? When the church services have to be online and you have to sit in your living room, maybe with a family or maybe by yourself, and, and it's just you looking at the preacher through a screen and, and there's nothing there else to support you? Will you... Hold on to God. What is your relationship like with God? Is it a relationship that is built on camp meetings? Is it a relationship that is built on the social gatherings of churches and the, and the youth camps and the, the big conferences and all the lights that go on and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, fancy, the fancy music and everything that's happening there? Or is it a relationship that is built with God? That no matter if all this is stripped away, when the camp meeting's gone, when the music is gone, when the, when the, when, when the conferences are cancelled, when there's, when there's no fancy lights and it's just you in a living room watching the preacher through a screen, when all that is that's left, will your relationship with God stand the test or is your relationship defined on the social gatherings put together by the church is that what your relationship with the with God is like you need your own relationship with God you need your own relationship with God, brothers and sisters, you, you can't rely on, on getting by now from, from Sunday to Sunday and from, uh, uh, from church meeting to church meeting, from conference to conference. You can't rely on that anymore. You need to be like David when every support structure, when everything was stripped away from him. He turned to the one place he knew to turn to, and that was God. And he asks, he, firstly, firstly, he encourages himself in God. He encourages himself in the Lord, the scripture says, in the Lord, his God. He encourages himself in that. He doesn't cry out, say, God, take, take me away from this. God, the people want to stone me. Take me away Get me out of this. Just take me away, God. No, no. He understands there's a process to go through it. He has to go through this. He has to go through this. And so, firstly, he encourages himself with God. I don't know what that may have looked like exactly. But maybe he just spent some time in worship. Spent some time realizing that, that God is still God and that that will never change. No matter what may happen down here, no matter what systems may get destroyed down here, God is still on the throne and that will never change. So brothers and sisters, you need to encourage yourself in God. You need to encourage yourself in God. And then secondly, secondly, he asks God, he asks God what to do. And this is where David finds out that everything for certain, because God says, go, you will recover all. And David finds out, hey, hey, I'm going, we're going to get it all back. God said it and we will get it all back. And so he finds out there that, that we're going to get it all back. But he, but he doesn't know what to do, but he, he knows who does know what to do and so he asks God God do I chase him 
do I go after them? Do we chase them down and, 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 and attack them? And God says, go. Chase them down. And you will recover all that was lost to you. But the story doesn't end there. So brothers and sisters, I will encourage you. Don't ask for an escape. David didn't ask for an escape. He encouraged himself in God. Encourage yourself in God. Encourage yourself in God. And then at some point, brothers and sisters, at some point it is okay to weep. It is okay to mourn. But that can only endure for the night, the scripture says. And joy needs to come in the morning. At some point, at some stage in all of this, the weeping needs to stop. The moaning needs to stop. The groaning needs to stop. And you need to get some steel in your spine and stand up and proclaim the word of God and proclaim to those that are around you that God is still God and that God is still in control at some stage in all of this, the weeping and the moaning and the groaning and the, and the complaining and the, and, and the wailing all needs to stop. And you need to move on. And David asked God, God, the weeping has stopped. What do you want me to do? The weeping, no longer are we going to just sit in the ashes of our burnt past lies. We're not going to just sit in the ashes of Ziklag and, whip and weep anymore. But what is, it, what is it you want me to do? And God says, go, pursue and you will recover all. And so we get 600 of his men together and they pursue it. I'm going to cut this story short. And short. You can continue to read the chapter on if you want. But uh, he recovers all and they come back to Ziklag. They come back to Ziklag. Brothers and sisters, whatever it is that you've lost, whatever it is that you're going through, if you will just stay with God, Put your trust in God. He will bring you through this. And you will recover what you had. You will be brought through this. But the story doesn't end there. The account doesn't end there. And so they come back to Ziklag. And I do not believe that when this is all over, God just wants to bring us back to where we were. God just, uh, doesn't just want to bring us back to, uh, well, service in church is normal. Let's get together, clap our hands and, and have, have a good time together and go on with our life. Let's, let's come do the, the, the standard church thing. I do not believe that God wants us to just come back to Ziklag. Back to the normal. But David and his men and, and everything that they have regained, their flocks and all the possessions and, and their, their families, uh, they've regained and they come back to Ziklag. They're there for two days. And on the third day, a young man comes running into Ziklag. Comes running into Ziklag and falls at David's feet. He says, I was with Saul at the battle between the Philistines and the Israelites. And David asks, how went the matter? How did it go? And the young man says, the young man says, Saul is dead and his three sons are dead. David didn't even realize that his best friend while all this was happening, he didn't even realize his best friend was dying in battle. His best friend was dying on a battlefield. Jonathan was dying on the battlefield. And David gets hit again with the news that his best friend is now dead. And he asks the question, to God again, do you want me to go to Judah? And God says, go. Go to Judah. Get out of the ashes of Ziklag and go to Judah. 
And just a few days later, after arriving in Judah, David is anointed the king of Judah and then later king of all of Israel. It was 14 years. It was 14 years since the beginning of what we were reading here, the passage that we read. It was 14 years since David was anointed by Samuel as a young shepherd boy. And it was a matter of one week from all this happening, when this all began, to David being anointed king of Judah. And so our brothers and, questions, I clo- brothers and sisters, I close with this question again. What will you do as your support systems are cancelled and destroyed? What will you do as the camp meetings, the youth camps, the church gatherings, the, 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 the conferences that we have, the, the, the setups that we have? What will you do when that's all been destroyed and that's all been stripped and taken away and it's just you in your living room watching the preacher brothers and sisters I encourage you follow David's example here turn to God turn to God his own men wanted to stone him turn to God his best friend died and he asked God, what, do you want me to go to Judah? What do I do now? Do you want me to go to Judah? I believe, I believe that when this is all said and done, brothers and sisters, God does not want us to go back to where we were, but rather go, go to Judah. Go somewhere else. God wants us to, to, to not just go back to Ziklag, but go to a new place that he is calling us to. Let's spend a moment in prayer. I'm going to pray for each person that is tuned into this stream this morning. I'm going to pray that God strengthens you. I'm going to pray that you would would understand the importance of every day turning to God. Let's pray together, church. I want you, wherever you're at, in Australia, wherever you're at, around the world, I want you to uh, pray this morning for your relationship, that it would be held strong. And I'm going to pray for your faith, that it would fail not. That's what Jesus told Peter. Peter, I'm praying that your faith would fail not. Let's pray together. God, we worship you. We praise you and we magnify you, God. And God, you see the situations that everyone is going on, that everyone is going through around the world today, that is going through in each person's lives, in each of the churches, God. God, you see what is happening uh, in people's households, God. I am unable to see right at this stage as the pastor what is going on in their life. But God, you know exactly. You see into the living room. You see into the where they're sitting in their house God and God I pray that you would strengthen them God I pray for their faith that it would fail not God I pray in the hard times and the tough times God that they would turn to you that their that their relationship would not be based on on the on the church social events but that their relationship would be based solely on you and their relationship with you God, I pray that you, would, that you would strengthen them. I pray that your peace would rest in their household, that your peace that passes all understanding would saturate them, God. I pray that you would uh, protect and guard their hearts and their minds from the attack of the enemy, God. And God, I pray that you would use them 
in, in, in wherever they may go, God, use them as an instrument for your kingdom, God, to spread hope in a time where fear grips the world, to spread uh, hope, God, that, there, that there's still a God in control, that there is a God that will, that will not leave them, that there, is, that there is purpose and meaning and that God will not forsake them during this time. Use them as an instrument to spread hope to those that they come in contact with, God. We worship you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Thank you for joining us here this morning. I encourage you to connect with our community wherever in the world you may be. And if you could, we would love for you just to comment just with where you're from, where you're uh, tuning in from. Uh, you can comment the city or the country or wherever it may be. I just encourage you to comment with that. Um, share this with, with people that need to hear a word of encouragement. There's so much fear. There's so much discouragement going on around the world today. Uh, share this with people that need to hear a word of encouragement. And I encourage you, join us Wednesday, 7 p.m. Darwin time for our Bible study. And then we will be back uh, for service, for preaching again, uh, 10 a.m. Sunday next week. I am looking at possibly putting on some more content and, and some more Bible studies and, and different things. If there's, something, if there's something about the Bible that you would like to know, uh, let us let us know and we can we can go we can go through that in a Bible study. But God bless you and uh, stay safe, stay in contact. Uh, you're dismissed this morning.